Hub is probably my most disturbing book yet. Uh, it was always going to be controversial when I started writing it due to the nature of the storyline. In short, a orphanage exists, but only the wealthy know about it. The Fred and Rose Wests of society basically use this place to get their children from. And these children, they're not so much invited into the family to be part of the family, but rather they're invited in to be a pet to the family. Um, something that the family can use to fulfill their deepest, darkest, sickest desires. Um, you know, if you have trigger warnings for stuff to do with children, avoid this fucking book and sleep easy knowing that it will never be available on Amazon. Um, I'm currently 160 pages into writing it and it's nasty. You know, there's a lot of stuff on there that's going to upset people. Um, with that in mind, it's only going to be available on Etsy at some point, but at the moment there's actually a pre-order link on Indiegogo where you can get um, paperbacks, uh, PDFs of it, uh, the hardback sold out already, um, and then it will get delivered straight to your house, signed in May. Uh, but yeah, this book isn't isn't for everyone. It's for those people that know that it is nothing more than a horror story. Um, emphasis on the word horror because some people they see this kind of content and people such as myself writing it and they're like oh he's only writing it because that's what he wants to do no it's not i'm writing it because it's fucking sick and disgusting and horrible it's a horror story although you know more accurately it's an extreme horror story um you know this book will upset people but by doing it on my own etsy store and on Indiegogo, by the way, I'll put the link to Indiegogo in the comments. By doing that, hopefully, I'll get rid of all the people like that. Only those that want to read it will go and find a copy. And those that are disgusted by this kind of topic and, you know, writing, they'll never get to see it because it will never be on Amazon. So it'll never be in the public eye as such. Um... But yeah, if you like the idea of this really graphic, disgusting, horrible, nasty, fucked up, my most controversial book yet, go on Indigo, uh, grab yourself a paperback or a PDF of it, um, and it will be delivered to you in May. So it's not really that far, is it? Um, but yeah, not for the faint of heart. It's disgusting. Okay, so I haven't posted anything on here for a while, so I wanted to just quickly mention a book that I got in uh, the post the other day that I pre-ordered um, a while ago on Indiegogo. Uh, this is Matt Shaw's newest book. Um, it's called The Hub. So, does anyone recognise this cover? Have you read it already? Um, I'll just read the back of it out to you. Uh, in Matt Shaw's most controversial novel to date, bad things happen to good children. If you find such content to be disturbing, this is not the book for you. This book is intended for those who are seeking an extreme horror story. Extreme violence, check your trigger warnings, okay? Don't blame me if you've got triggers. <laughs> so the orphanage is known only to the wealthy. The children within are not up for adoption to those seeking to expand their family. They are there to be taken as pets and playthings only. New toys for the rich to use in order to fulfill the deepest, darkest desires. So I'll just tell you the triggers are self-harm, domestic violence, SA, violence to children, torture and gore. So yeah, you've been warned. Um, Matt's already working on the sequel to this, but look at that cover. Oh, it's it's not going to be a pleasant read. It's not meant to be a pleasant read. Um, but let me know if you've already read this. There was um, digital copies as well. If you do want this, it's not available on Amazon. You um, have to go through his Etsy store uh, to get this as well. Um, and this one is also signed. So yeah. I'm excited to read that. Let me know what you're reading at the minute. All right, y'all. I have the absolute most fucked up book review for you guys today. This one is called Hub by Matt Shaw. So, Sean is probably most well known for his horror titles, but I always love to mention that he writes more than just horror. I fully expect this review Hub to not be for everybody, and that's totally okay. But if Hub is putting you off and it doesn't really sound like something you'd read, 
check out his other stuff because he writes so much more than just horror and he has so many different titles available like so so many different titles so if hub's not for you that's fine but please make sure you check out his other stuff because he writes so much more than just horror now in regards to hub i cannot give you a premise for this story any premise that i'm going to give you would definitely spoil it but what i will give you instead is a huge trigger warning this story involves children under age 10 being uh, physically assaulted and s aid um the scenes are incredibly graphic incredibly graphic um so if that's not something that you can handle story is definitely not for you um if there was ever a story in the world that was going to get match all canceled this is definitely the one and i'm sure some of you guys are thinking why even write a story like this then why be so triggering because Shaw likes to push the boundaries, and I absolutely love that about him. Um, this story is not just shock factor. It has an actual plot. It has um, characters with actual storylines. Um, this story is not for just shock factor at all. So I don't actually have a whole lot of triggers, but this story definitely made me stop and breathe a couple of times because the scenes are just so incredibly graphic. Um... I can't express to you how boundary pushing this story is. Um, I'm also really like anxiously awaiting to see what other people's thoughts are because I know that Shaw is going to gain followers from this story, but he's also going to lose followers. And I'm just really waiting to see what everybody's reaction to this is going to be. So despite the content of this story, I found the book to be incredible. It put me in all of my feels. You know, it is gut-punching and heartbreaking and so, so intense. And I love that it pushes all of the boundaries. That might make me sound really weird, um, but I love that it is so extreme because horror is subjective and this story is definitely horrifying. For those of you that feel you have a strong enough stomach for Hub by Matt Shaw, please keep in mind this is not going to be a story you can find on Amazon or Godless.com. You're going to have to follow the links on his Facebook page to purchase. There is an e-copy, a paperback, and a hardback copy available. This story is going to release in just a few weeks, guys, so make sure that you get your copies while you can. Hey guys, so I'm back with another video. I finished reading uh, Kids by Matt Shaw, which is the second installment to The Hub and it again just kind of blew my mind it's crazy to think that these things are really out there and all these things really happen um it kind of puts a different world in perspective um you kind of fall in love with the character david but then you realize that he is just really 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 fucked up in the head of everything that happened at the hub um and so you get to kind of see more backstory into everything that went on there versus what the first book kind of talked about this one you get more of what happened when the kids disobeyed and what all they were kind of made to do the ending i was definitely rooting for the two men um kind of sucks how all that went down but it's crazy to believe that you know people can be sucked into these things so deep and they believe everything that happened to them was for a reason or because you know it's just what needed to be done um i really enjoyed this one again if it, it was it was fucked up it was super fucked up um matt shaw told everyone this you know if you have certain triggers don't read it um he 100 percent meant it it's not a joke so uh, again if you like this kind of genre you know extreme horror things like that uh, give it a try if you don't don't try to make yourself read it you know uh, not everything is for everyone and that's okay um happy reading read whatever makes you happy thanks matt for another good book um if you haven't already you can get on his patreon and he's got some really cool stuff um, for some of his supporters i recently joined and i'm super excited to be a part of it so you know check him out he's got his website as well um, and his uh, facebook is matt shaw so you can find him on there and be able to find all of his links and where you can buy his books and um, the two books that I read the, previously by him were um, Hub and Kids. I got both of those as a PDF file. So if you have a Kindle or anything like that, you can also get those instead of giving the physical copy. So definitely give it a shout. Um, definitely five stars for me. Thanks. 
So I was uh, recording this video a minute ago and I'm about to start again because I had to go and sort something out. Basically, I've got a fish tank next to me and I was talking about a YouTuber who we're about to talk about now. And the fish was like, oh, not this crazy woman again. I've had enough of this. And it just upturned and died. Like it, it doesn't want to hear about her anymore. To such an extent, it just stopped living. Um, but anyway, I... I hooked him out of the fish tank and uh well i'll fry him up later that's a bit of dinner go with my chips that's um fries for the americans out there anyway the purpose of this video is we're going to be talking about a youtuber who has once again made another twatish video um and then she complains that oh people come after me because she makes these videos and she's surprised that there's negative reaction to it but anyway, her and this other person, I've got no idea who they are, they wanted to have a conversation about extreme horror. Fair enough. They wanted to know why people like it, uh, recommend certain books that they do like, tell people who they should and shouldn't read, um, moan about book talk, saying that book talk is actually helping extreme horror get into um, proper brick and mortar stores, um, which is great on one hand, but on the other hand, you know, it is potentially putting these books in line with children who shouldn't be reading such content. Um, they they raise some, some valid points, you know, uh, and yeah, there is discussion to be had there, but they go about it, or rather this particular person does. The other one is less offensive. This particular person goes against, uh, goes, she basically goes goes to have the discussion in all the wrong ways. So she raises some valid points and you're like, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, okay. But then she starts attacking everyone. Um, you know, oh my God, extreme horror authors, the guys who write this are just misogynistic. Actually, I think you'll find that a lot of the extreme horror authors are some of the nicest guys you could actually hope to meet. Yes, there are some who are problematic. Um, you know, only a couple of years ago, one such writer was sending videos of himself uh, to unsuspecting women and he was naked and basically doing things that they didn't want to be seeing. So, you know, there are problematic people out there, but that goes in all walks of life. You can't just take this example of th this person and tar everyone else with the same brush. But it seems like she does. She reads the books, instantly thinks that we're misogynistic. Or she says she reads the books because she did actually try and describe one book um, by John Athen. And what she described was not the book. So uh, clearly she hasn't read it and it just makes you wonder, does she actually read these books properly or does she just pretend to read them just so she can slag them off? Personally, I think it's the latter. Um, but yeah, my biggest problem with, with, with this person and such discussions is the lack of acceptance. You know, she's very much, this is my opinion. And I can already hear people coming onto the comments section to defend, you know, why they like such and such and blah, blah, blah. It's gross. I've heard it all before. I've seen it so many times. They're having a discussion, love. You're basically saying, how can people like this? And the people that like it are then going, well, I like it because blah, blah, blah. But you don't want to hear that because you've already judged them. In your last video, the latest one, you literally say if you have no triggers, if there are no hard limits to what you do not want to read, stop. Take a good look at yourself and ask what kind of person you are. So you're basically attacking the readers now as well. Interesting business practice given the fact that you keep talking about this horror book you're writing. So you're alienating all of the authors, but you're also alienating readers now as well. That's just stupid. Art is subjective. We can like what we want to like. We can write what we want to write. And we put warnings on the books. Like you talk about Hub, a book that I have not released to the mainstream. It's only available on my Etsy store or my Big Cartel store or through the campaign, the very successful campaign I, I hasten to add. And now part one, part two and part three are done. But you talk about it like it's disgusting, rah, rah, rah. Yeah, it's disgusting. It says so in the notes at the front of the book. But there's also trigger warnings on the book going, you know, avoid this book if this isn't your kind of reading material. So clearly it's not your kind of reading material. So why read it? That goes for anyone. If, if you don't like extreme horror, why read it? 
there's lots of genres out there. There's lots of subgenres within horror that you can read and that you will probably enjoy. But to come into the extreme horror market and moan about it, fair enough, you're entitled to your opinion. That's not an issue. That was never an issue. What's the issue is telling people, other people, how they should feel and what they should read. For example, saying you should not read Duncan Ralston, you should not read Aaron Beauregard, you should not read Matt Shaw, you should not read. By doing this, you're forcing your beliefs on other people. So it's one thing to have an opinion and say, I don't like this book. These are the reasons I do not like it. But then it's up to the individuals who see your video, who see your review, as to whether they want to go and read it. Maybe they're sitting there going, actually, it sounds pretty good. I might enjoy that one. You know, but you're not there doing that. You're basically saying to them, don't support this person. Don't support that person. Don't support these people because they're all evil people because of the content they write. And it's just stupid. That's why people get upset at you and it's not even like they're upset properly you know they just think you're a dick you know that's their opinion and they're welcome to it i know my opinion um and again i'm welcome to mine just as you are yours but what i've never done is i've never gone and said do not look at this person's reviews do not go and follow this person's videos because while i may disagree with you Others may agree with you and enjoy your content. It's just not for me. But that's the difference between you and me. Yet I'm the evil person for writing extreme horror. I'm evil. Yet if I disagree with something you say, I have the mental capacity to step back and go, you know what? I don't care. You don't like my stuff? Not a problem. I'm going to go and carry on doing what I'm doing because, you know, I'm making quite a nice living from it. You, on the other hand, you seem to be so triggered by everything that you seem to think it's okay to tell people what they can and cannot do. And that, to me, is just fucking weird. But at the same time, I'm kind of grateful because, thanks to you, the book Moist Gusset exists. Um, had it not been for you saying what white men should and shouldn't write, I would never have even thought of the idea. I'd never have gone and written it. And again, now it's quite a nice, successful little book. So thanks for that. Um, but yeah, have your opinions. Have your reviews, even if they're negative. But don't tell people who they can and cannot support. That is just pathetic. And also telling readers to have a good look at themselves and question the sort of person they are because they like extreme content. It's just bizarre. More so when in the same video, a little bit later on, you say your own mother goes a lot harder than you. Ooh, uh. Um pass a number on love you know does that mean your mum needs to take a good look at herself and ask the sort of person she is was that a slight dig at your mum because that's how it comes across but anyway peace love happiness and spunk to all uh life is too short for negativity so just be happy be happy read what you want to read enjoy what you want to enjoy and don't let anyone else dictate what you should and shouldn't do because those are the people that just are not worth your time. Well, it's still kicking off. Hi. So that video is about me. And I'm a book reviewer. <laughs> I honestly think it's fucking crazy that I even have to come on here and address an author's comments that were made about me, a reviewer. I genuinely don't think that these people understand that there's a boundary, there's a line, and you have to respect that. If you write books or make any content or any art for that matter, you are opening yourself up to public criticism, especially from reviewers. That is what I do on my YouTube channel. I review books. I reviewed this man's book and he did not like it. And instead of taking a step back and listening to the constructive criticism that I provided, he dedicated an entire book to me. This is not normal. This is horrifying. And this is coming from a man who writes child. I haven't read anything by this man that is not completely concerning, alarming, just total red flag behavior, which is why I refer to him as a fucking incel. Yes, I know what the word incel means. 
It means involuntarily celibate because I believe no woman would ever come within a 10 foot radius of you because you're horrifying. I'm literally shaking having to make this video because I am so terrified of a grown man who is an author coming at a reviewer. My whole channel is just my opinion. It is just my opinion. And I decide to make one video about a genre that I love, making an open discussion, talking evenly about the positives and negatives, telling how I love the extreme horror genre, how I have found solace in it, how I have found comfort in it, but I also think there's some major things that need of change in the genre. Sorry, this is really hard for me to talk about because I'm literally shaking terrified of this man. All I wanted to do was open a discussion. If you want to see it, you can check it out on my channel. There are 90 minutes talking about the negatives on my channel. And I collaborated with another amazing creator named Aspen. And there is an hour of positive content on her channel, which coincidentally about a fifth of the people that watched my video decided to go over to hers because they didn't think it was worth the watch, I guess, to have the positive take they just wanted the drama from taking what i said to critique the genre again i'm a reviewer it's what i do is critique um completely out of context tell me that i wasn't a true fan of the genre and tell me how i felt about things instead of listening to the video where i actually explained everything i thought i'm not going to go through my thoughts here if you want all of the things that i want to change about the genre you can go watch my video but as soon as I found out that there was somebody saying that they had dedicated a book to me and the only thing that I had ever read from them is torture porn and disgusting child abuse, I was horrified. This is not something that Riley Sager does when he gets a negative book review, you know what I mean? This isn't something that Tessa Bailey does when she gets a negative book review. Hell, I can criticize Colleen Hoover all day, but she would never do this to a book reviewer. I do not think that this would happen outside of the extreme horror community, and that's a huge fucking issue. So out of fear and out of anger and out of having no fucking clue what this man was writing about me, I used the only tool that I thought that I had at my disposal as a reviewer to give it a one-star review on Goodreads, to share with my followers, do not read this man's book because I don't know what he said about me and I'm not gonna pay him money to get access to the book and find out. And then he wants to fight me in the comments and claim that I don't read the books that I review because of his one review, the one review that I gave him that was one star because his reaction to my negative review of his other book that I did read and hated was to dedicate an entire novel to me. That's crazy. That's insane behavior. If you're a thriller and horror fan and you've ever read the book The Last Word by Taylor Adams that came out this year, this i'm basically living that i am living the plot to the last word like uh hi taylor adams did you predict the future because what is happening all in all i just feel like his behavior completely proves every single point that i made in my discussion video and <laughs> i'm consistently blown away with how hypocritical and disgusting the extreme horror community is. And like he said in his TikTok, I used to find solace there. I thought I had found my people. I love dark content. I find a lot of catharsis and validation in it because my life is not sunshine and rainbows. So I don't like to read all about that. But there is a fucking line and he has crossed it. I stopped responding to him hours ago. I didn't want to fight on fucking Goodreads. I don't want to be on a goddamn podcast with this terrifying man. Here's what I want to do. Not talk about it anymore. My video was to open up a discussion with my viewers about the genre. I wanted nuanced conversation. I did not want this. And he just keeps digging in. I mean, I was talking with him at 2 p.m. my time 
on Goodreads. It's now two in the morning, 12 hours later, and he's making six minute long TikToks about me. Like, I can't make this up. Authors, you cannot do this to reviewers. It is our job to give our opinions. If you do not like our opinions, you have to separate yourself from your art, go to bed, and deal with it. Not everybody is going to like the content you put out, and you cannot bash them across the internet and dedicate horrifying books to them just because you don't like what we have to say. I literally have been off of TikTok since like June and I had to reactivate my account. I don't want to be in this space. I literally had to reactivate my account because I would not feel right not responding to this man. Book talk, fucking do your thing because this man's crazy. Hello, I just wanted to hop on here and say thank you so, so much to the book community, the horror community, all of y'all. Well, not all of y'all, <laughs> but the people who have shown up and supported me just thank you so much i am overwhelmed by the amount of dms the amount of comments i'm gonna try to go through and respond to everyone but it's a lot and i'm just one girl yes i have seen matt shaw's latest post about me the whole manifesto over on facebook and i will be responding to it but i have work i have life it is monday and i have to see clients i have to do my day job and at the end of the day my clients are always going to come first before anything social media related so it's going to be a minute for my response i'm going to have to go to work and then come back and then collect my thoughts but here's what i will say we have seen this narrative a million trillion times before she's lying she's lying yeah you're not going to get away with it this time matt so I have a lot more to say. I am never going to let a man get away with this. He really picked the wrong one. And yes, I'm still having my regularly scheduled live reading sprints that I have every month over on my Patreon tomorrow night. So I plan on talking about the situation a lot more candidly and responding to comments in there because it's a safe space. Obviously, it's on Patreon, so none of the trolls can get in there. Um, so that's my plan. Yeah, this has been a lot, but thank you guys so much, and I really hope no other reviewers in the extreme horror community have to go through this. I doubt that. I think it's probably going to happen again, but hopefully this is one of the last times. Hello, people. I am back from work. I know it's late. This is just the hours that a therapist keeps. I'm sorry, but here I am to say Number one, first of all, before we even get into the manifesto, I do not condone death threats. That should be obvious, but people were asking. I don't condone them. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at Matt's manifesto, where he goes through all the misinformation that was spread about him. So he goes through point by point, and his first one is saying that it is not true that he wrote a torture porn book about me. I think the line between about and because of slash dedicated to is very thin. But while I may not be in the book, I'm not a character. And while it also may not be a torture porn book since he does call it a rom-com, those two things aside, there is no doubt in anyone's mind that this was damaging and written out of anger. It had my name in it. It was harmful to me, my image, all reviewers, and all women. We need Matt Shaw to have a moment like in Diary of a Wimpy Kid where the older brother has to go, sorry women. Like that is what we need from you, Matt. His next point clarifies that the inspiration <laughs> for the book did not come from my negative review, but in fact actually came from one sentence that I said in my negative review, which was that men cannot write female characters. And I do stand by that comment. I think for the most part, male authors get female characters extremely wrong. There are some people that I've read from, like Grady Hendrix and Riley Sager, that I absolutely love the way that they craft female characters, but the majority of male authors do not do this. However, do sorry, cut me off. That does not mean that you get a j get out of jail free card. You should try to be better. You should try to write good female characters. Have female sensitivity readers. But we've seen Matt's attempt. And um, for you, Matt, I think you should just give up. And then he goes on to say that 
He doesn't think anyone should dictate what a person should or shouldn't read because if you don't like it, that doesn't mean that someone else won't. Basically, he's saying that art is subjective. This is not groundbreaking. But in this comment, he's basically saying that reviewers should not exist. Like, we shouldn't share an opinion on a book because it might influence people. But that's a reviewer's whole job to encourage based on my enjoyment of a book and to discourage if it was a waste of my time. I do not want my viewers to spend their money on something that is not worth it. I would rather help them save money or prioritize something different on their TBR. But at the end of the day, that is just my opinion. And my viewers are not beholden to me. They don't have to listen. They have free will. My opinions and no other reviewers' opinions are law. Like, I watch reviews all the time and make a decision to buy that book based on the reviewer saying something like, well, it had this trope that I didn't like, and I know that I like that, so I'm gonna pick it up. Regardless of reviews, people are gonna do what they want. So it makes no sense to silence negative reviews, unless Matt just really thinks I'm that powerful. So here he's talking about my fake review, but here's the thing, it's not fake. I did read the book, I just DNF'd it after two pages because it was so horrifying and disgusting, and I'm not gonna put myself through that. Also, this highlighted portion is basically invalidating the reason why I had posted the review on Goodreads and saying that he's easy to reach, so I should have just reached out to him directly. If you watch my last TikTok on my page, you will understand why I felt so uncomfortable reaching out to him. But even if I wasn't, I'm a reviewer and I wanted to share with my audience to warn them that there's a book with my name in it floating around KU, which a lot of my viewers read from. Goodreads was the best place to reach them all at the same time. And his next point just makes my blood boil because it is his misogyny on full display and he doesn't recognize it. Just wait. So here he's referencing my very real fear as the victim card. I think if you watch the very first video that I made about this situation where I was reacting to it as it was happening, I'm in the black sweatshirt, it's on my page, you can see the fear in my eyes. You can feel the fear just by listening to my voice. I was sobbing before and after I made that video. This entire section, you can pause to read it. It just shows he has no idea what it's like to be a woman. And he doesn't attempt to understand. In this section, he mentions what he does when he's scared. He avoids the thing that's scary to him. But here's the thing, Matt. If I avoided everything I was scared of, I wouldn't be able to fill up my car with gas. I wouldn't be able to go to the grocery store. I wouldn't be able to walk on the sidewalk. When you're a woman, you get very, very used to, number one, hiding your fear to please others, and number two, facing your fears. So gaslighting me and your fans by trying to say that I wasn't actually scared because I keep engaging with you, it's just not going to work. I engage with things that I'm fearful of every day of my life, as does every other woman I know. Also, has he ever looked in a fucking mirror? Like, he's scary. Here he's saying that I encouraged other people to write fake reviews, and that's just not a good sign. Please find me any evidence of me doing that. I have never once encouraged anyone to write a fake review. And no one did write a fake review to my knowledge. I mean, yes, some of my patrons did read the book on my behalf because I didn't want to go through that. And they gave it a fair, honest review based on their reading experience. And the last piece is just the cherry on the cake of misogyny, where he invalidates not just mine, but all women's natural instinct to fear men. Matt says, no, it is not natural for women to be scared of men. So this is for Matt and any other male horror author that is backing this fucker up. This fear exists. It has been learned over time since the beginning of time to protect women. This fear, this internal instinct is what gets us to cross the street 
When there's a man walking towards us that could possibly be dangerous, it gets us to put our keys in our hand. And it motivated me to want to fight your ass and literally protect any other female reviewer that I possibly could from going through what I've gone through the past three days. So that's my response to his post. You can stop watching here or you can stick around because I'm going to break down a couple of the comments that I felt were problematic as well. I know this is long, so no pressure to stay, but it is very eye-opening. Here's a comment that he made replying to one of his little fans about my judgment, which I said multiple times in the discussion video that I was not approaching with judgment. This is all conjecture. If he felt judged, those are his feelings. And there's an underhanded dig in here about my profession as a therapist. This is a whole other issue that I would actually really like to discuss at length. Therapists and all mental health workers really are held to this unrealistic standard of perfection simply based on the fact that we help people. Please stop expecting therapists to be superhuman because we are just people. So my job has no relevance here. He also mentioned in that response that I was deleting comments. I never deleted a single comment. Were there many that were held for review by YouTube because your fans were bringing hate speech to my page? Yes, but I think this is projection because he was deleting a shit ton of TikTok comments. This is a comment from another author on Matt's thread, which is just ridiculous to me. It basically says that no one should ever give a negative review and the only people who give valid reviews of books are other authors. This is just an astounding take to me. Like, do authors not write for readers? Do they only write for other authors? And the last comment I want to address, I think is the most important because it truly just shows the lack of nuance that I was trying to call out with my discussion from the very beginning. This person says that Matt is a kind person. And here's the trouble with that. I don't understand why these people cannot separate good person, shitty action. It is just so black and white to them. It is ridiculous to me kind, nice people knowingly perpetuate harmful patterns every single day. No one is all good. No one is all bad. Y'all have to stop perpetuating this narrative to get anywhere. And that's all. Hopefully I'm done. Although I still haven't addressed the comments that he made about my mother and I haven't seen anyone else address that. So <laughs> Who knows, Maddie? Maybe I'll be back. I am your worst nightmare. You messed with the wrong girl. Well, the past day has been a lot. Yes, I know Matt posted another manifesto on his Echo Chamber Facebook page, and I will be responding to that when I'm off work. But first, I did want to address something that is exceedingly concerning to me because this is not just coming from Matt. I am seeing this narrative in the comments a lot, and that is questioning why I am scared of this man. So he passionately said that whenever I was saying that he had written a book about me, that he did not want me to use that verbiage, that that verbiage was completely wrong, that the book was not about me, but it was inspired by my comments and dedicated to me. He said he would never write a torture book about anyone without their consent because that's something that his little fans do request of him I guess but I found that Matt has written a torture book about a real life woman that woman is Amber Heard and here is the book right here and so you could say oh that's just all fiction no 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 because I found a video on his public YouTube channel where he defends mocking her he thinks that it's okay there's even a section of the video on his YouTube channel called Amber Deserves It. And that tells me pretty much all I need to know about how Matt feels about the victims that he portrays in his extreme horror books. Which is concerning to me because, again, he did write Hub, which we haven't even talked about in this situation. It's also something concerning for Amber herself, which leads me to believe that he sees me in a similar light to how he sees Amber. So to anyone in the comments asking me why I refuse to take part in this open discussion that Matt is asking for, that is why. I feel like I shouldn't even have to justify that, but here we are. 
Obviously, I feel unsafe sitting down with somebody who conceptualizes me in that way, especially when you consider the dedication and the content of the introduction to the novel that was inspired by me. Someone sent me the introduction to the book. You can pause to read it. Just keep in mind, this is not fiction. This is an author's note signed by Matt himself. These are his words. So if anyone's still questioning why I feel unsafe, guess what? You need to take a hard look at yourself. I know y'all love when I prompt you to do that. Do some soul searching, go to therapy, explore all that internalized misogyny. Hi, it's me, I'm back again. I know I said that I didn't wanna be on this platform and I wanted to deactivate my book talk and all of those things, well, Women have been silenced in the extreme horror community for way too fucking long, so I'm not going to do that. I'm allowed to change my mind. Women are allowed to change their minds. And I've changed it. You might have seen my last video where author Matt Shaw attacked me, a reviewer, all over TikTok. I gave him one negative review years ago. <laughs> actually, years ago during the pandemic. And then yesterday opened up a separate discussion on my channel about the extreme horror genre. I was not bashing the genre. I love the genre. I was literally reading it last night. But obviously something I said triggered him because apparently he was acting very out of character. You can pause and read this, but this is one of Matt Shaw's tweets from 2019 where he was advocating against the behavior that he's exhibiting right now. Rather than listening to my valid criticism of his books, he's, uh, he's triggered. He's triggered, and that's what he loves to say about women, that we get so triggered. It's your turn to be triggered, Matt. So after I stitched his TikTok and basically obliterated him, he took it down like a coward. And instead, he ran back to the echo chamber that he knows so well, his little Facebook pages where they love to talk shit on women and reviewers and really anyone that has a dissenting opinion. So this is the post that he made about me on his author page. I'm not sure why he's referring to me as Amber. He also has mentioned in the past that he has spelled my name wrong intentionally. My best guess is so, you know, there's no way that I can accuse him of like libel or something like that. But anyway, he goes on to say that I'm painting some kind of narrative. Like I'm just inventing things, which is not true. I had been dealing with the situation for over 12 hours at the point where I posted my response on TikTok. It was 12 hours of getting sent shit and seeing shit just naturally and organically come up on my own. That's not a narrative. That's just what happened. He also claims that the book that he wrote and dedicated to me was not based on the negative review that I gave. But here's the thing that really confuses me. I have never had one singular interaction with Matt Shaw before yesterday. And the book that was published with the dedication to me where I am named <laughs> was published in March of this year, months ago. So today, everything that he's critiquing about me now could not possibly be the reason for this vile dedication. And I'm racking my brain thinking, what could have possibly incited this then? And in December and January 2023, 60 days before he published this book, because that's about how long extreme horror authors spend on their art, I featured one of his books that I absolutely hated in my worst books of the year video. Somehow, 60 days later, after I give him a negative review in my video, I didn't even post a Goodreads review because I wasn't on Goodreads at the time I was on Storygraph. Somehow, 60 days later, about the time it takes to write an extreme horror novel, there's this uh, vile book dedicated to me. So if it's not that, what was it? Because that was the only interaction I've ever had, at least before this situation and before March 2023. And you're probably thinking like, oh, okay, so he dedicated some book to you and it probably says to that one reviewer, like, fuck you. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll show you. I don't know why TikTok is cutting off the photo, but you can't see where he had written my name and prefaced um, why I inspired this book. You can see the full thing on my Instagram story. But yeah, as you can see, he compares me to a Nazi and calls me a trout. 
fully displaying his misogyny and proving every point that I've ever made about him. But apparently this wasn't because of my bad review. All right. I'm not British, so I actually didn't know what the slang term trout meant. Uh, as you can see, the misogyny speaks for itself. If authors are allowed to continue to treat reviewers this way, it's going to lead to a lot of dishonest reviews because it's going to mean that creators are going to be continually terrified to be honest out of fear that number one they're gonna have a smear campaign launched against them and number two they're gonna have to deal with this shit like this is not why we read i've already talked to creators that are terrified in the extreme horror space to not hurt these little poor authors feelings take some advice from your 2019 self matt that posted that tweet separate yourself from your art it's my job as a reviewer to give my honest opinions. That's what I did. Your book sucked. Deal with it. So I just came across the old, uh, the Matt Shaw controversy and I'm just like, I don't know, I'm blown away from it. Like if you haven't heard, Matt Shaw dedicated one of his books to a uh, reviewer that didn't like his book, basically comparing her to a Nazi or whatever. I'll put the thing here so you can uh, read it if you want. And it's just so disgusting. I just, I can't fathom why an author would do this. Like, if someone doesn't like your book, they don't like your book. Like, just move the fuck on with your life. Like, this has got to be the most pathetic reaction to that ever. I get that it can be hard to um, have criticism. I get that it can be hard to see neg negative reviews. But this kind of reaction is just so disgusting. And to be an extreme horror as uh, author as well, like, it extreme horror gets such bad rap and attention anyway because of like the stuff you're writing about and like to then behave like this outside of writing your your books i just i can't fathom this this is disgusting behavior like i for one would never pick up any of your books now like just you've gone out of your way to make a woman feel unsafe simply because she didn't like your book. I mean, I grow the fuck up never meant, uh-oh, another author acting unhinged. So a video came up on my For You page yesterday and I will tag the creator down below. An author named Matt Shaw who writes dark horror books recently released a book in which he dedicated his book to a bad reviewer that reviewed his book years ago. Huh? So apparently years ago this reviewer left a bad review basically criticizing his misrepresentation of female written characters written by him, a male author. And he took great offense to that, as you could tell. His offense was so great that he likened her to a Yahtzee. I just gotta say something. I just gotta say something for the 1% of authors out there who don't seem to get it. I know the rest of you, you're cool. Book reviews are not for you. They are for the reader to see if they would like to read the book. Okay? What's so hard to understand about that? And if somebody writes a bad review on your book and you get your feebies hurt, that is your problem. If I seem like I'm being unsympathetic towards this author, it's because his dedication was disgusting. He showed no respect for his reviewers, so I will show the same amount of respect to him. As an aspiring author myself, I understand that there will probably be bad reviews on my book that hurt my feelings, but I cannot then go and make people feel afraid to leave honest reviews on my book. If you do not have the confidence to write a book without seeing bad reviews, then don't do it. And if you want to go support this author, I'm not going to judge you for it, but I just wanted people to be aware of what's going on because a lot of people don't want to support authors like this because they make all of us look bad. So stop! Happy Monday. So my feed all day um, has been about the Matt Shaw situation and I'm not going to get into specifics here. Um, these three creators have done wonderful jobs of summing up what's going on. Um, Haley, I I feel so badly for um, what has occurred. Like you didn't deserve that at all. Um, just this is just like a note to the male authors in especially the extreme horror genre that are remaining silent. We we notice um, women should feel safe. In especially a community where like the subject matter is very very rough, um, you you should want women to still feel safe and not like you know they could be at risk because of crazy behavior like this. So your silence is noted. 
Um, personally, I just kind of want to sum this up really quickly. I want to put a big thank you to the male authors that are speaking out. I, I've had quite a few come up on my timeline. I see you. Your books have now skyrocketed to the top of my TBR. Um, the ones that are remaining silent, you're in stasis. And to the ones that are supporting him on any platform, it's noted. And your books are no longer on my TBR. So, that's just kind of a heads up of what's going on. But like I said, I truly, truly, truly appreciate those that are speaking out. Um, it's already such a stigmatized genre that at the very least you can make sure women feel safe, especially when it comes to reading these types of books. We love them and we want to know that they're not really real. Um, but this kind of behavior that has occurred makes it very disconcerting and yeah, it's, it's just not a good look. Men making women feel unsafe, book talk edition. This is something that I normally talk about over on my other profile where I talk more about politics and um, <clears throat> issues that are, you know, of the day. But I saw a video earlier by a creator I follow where she's discussing this uh, writer whose name is Matt Shaw. Hang on, I'll show him to you. So this is uh, extreme horror writer Matt Shaw. And he uh, didn't like what a woman had to say about one of his books and about the extreme horror genre in general and so um he wrote a book essentially in her honor and dedicated it to her he used her name in the dedication and proceeded to call her a nazi and a trout which is um an incredibly misogynistic term for a woman that i cannot define here on book talk we have a real issue with authors who uh are offended by negative reviews and go on to jump into reader spaces and harass reviewers, but this goes far beyond that. This is gross, abusive, stalker level behavior. He's also done all of the other, you know, normal shit that writers who are pissed off do, which is, you know, argue on Goodreads and record videos, but dedicating a book to someone, writing a book in their honor goes beyond the pale and I hope that everyone who finds out about this understands how gross and disgusting and honestly dangerous this type of behavior is and in fact this reader was discussing and calling out misogyny in the extreme horror genre which is something I don't know a lot about because I don't read extreme horror but I do know a lot about misogyny and unfortunately I do know a lot about men who behave this way this type of behavior is why women are so afraid to speak up, not only on the internet, but in daily life. Good morning, folks. Right, this is a video in response to the recent shit that has been going on about this Hayley Hughes who thinks that she's a reviewer but doesn't even read books that she's reviewing. So basically she's now gone in on one of my favourites, Matt Shaw, saying he's a pervert, that he's unhinged, that he's, you know, all this stuff for writing fiction, a book which isn't real. You don't have to read it. So she hasn't even read it, and then she's just gone full blown in, being a horrible cunt, basically. So she's got all her minions going. Oh, I feel really bad for you. I feel sorry for you. I, oh, I think you've, you know, I think he's going to unlive you, kill you, basically. Well, TikTok doesn't like the word kill, apparently. Um, she thinks he's going to kill her. She lives in America. Do you really think that Matt Shaw is going to spend his money and go get on a plane just to go and fucking s s see you? You're not even that important. You're a waste of fucking space and you're spreading hate around for no fucking reason, Bridget. For no reason. And it's absolutely disgusting. Now, you keep saying about, like, all the 
extreme horror, the splatterpunk horror um, community is, you know, um, ganging up on you or whatever. But you're doing exactly the same. You're getting your fucking little goblins to go into the Facebook group and then you getting screenshots and then you're putting it on your Instagram story without any context whatsoever. So it makes everybody that you are trying to fight against look shit. And actually, you are in the wrong. You're in the wrong, Hayley. You're a nasty, horrible person. And to think that you, 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 you say that you like this um, genre and that you're writing your, a book or whatever, oh, fuck off. You're never going to be accepted into this as a, a legitimate author. And if you use a different pen name, people are going to find out that it's you and just not even bother with you. So I tell you what, review a book. And if it's a valid thing that you didn't like it, then fair enough. But you can't just turn around and go, oh, hub is disgusting, it's got child porn in it. But I'll read Dead Inside where they've eaten fucking babies. Because it's satire. Fuck off. Right, I'm done. Because I'm getting angry. Fucking cunt. Matt Shaw needs to apologize. He needs to be apologizing. He's in the wrong. Point blank. There is no other way around it. He crossed a line. There is a boundary between author and reviewer and reader. Okay? If a reviewer does not like one of your books, okay, take that criticism. I know that that has been your sentiment previously, but suddenly you can't take the criticism anymore. And I don't know if it's because you're so used to getting so much praise within the community or within your echo chamber and Facebook groups or what it is, but this situation is not giving off funny edgelord vibes or energy. It's giving off incel misogynist energy, okay? Haley gave a very valid review and discussion about the extreme horror community and the misogyny within it. Uh, And you know, you didn't like her review that she gave to you previously and how it was one of her least favorite books of last year. You didn't like that. So then you dedicated your next book to her. And in that you call her some bad things, including a Nazi and a trout, which is a straight up misogynistic term. So, you know, Way to go proving her whole point. And within this time, you basically are saying, oh, this little girl, she shouldn't be even reading a scream horror if she can't handle it. That's sexist. Okay. (laughs) Straight up. And then you are upset because people are saying, well, this is wrong. People are asking you to take accountability and you just want this to end. This is your fault. Like, this is all your fault. You made this happen. Why would you dedicate this book to her and say those things about her and then continue on with it? Like, what did you expect would happen? That nothing bad will come of this? Like, you did this to yourself. There's a total lack of accountability when it comes to men like you, and you will never think that what you do is wrong. This is wrong. What you did was creepy, 100%. The fact that you are calling her different names, calling her Amber, that's messed up creepy and it is scary like what in the world what universe are you in this whole situation is baffling to me because i don't know why anyone would think this would be okay in any situation in life in anything what why why like the amount of audacity here to think that you could say these things about a woman and just continue to get away with it no 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 no. calling a woman a trout is sexist straight up misogynistic and you should be apologizing like honestly i don't know why you are trying to keep defending yourself deflecting you're trying to take anything away from her open discussion and make it about something else this is about the crap you've done (laughs) since then and previously after her first review like what you've done is not normal and is not okay dedicating a book to a woman in that manner is not funny. No matter how funny you might think it is, it's not. It's really gross and creepy. And there's no like edge lord energy in that like you were hoping and thinking. Just no. No. 
you need to apologize straight up you're in the wrong like you need to say sorry every single day i just am reaffirmed in my decision to really not read cishet male authors they are honestly on my hesitant do not read list and is it unfair to lump them all in one group together yes but again every day i'm just reaffirmed that that's the right thing to do they just hate women so much they truly hate women and it's so obvious and the way that they attack the way that they're so arrogant and this horror author that's going around right now i wish i could say i'm surprised but i'm not cishet men especially in horror spaces